Hey guys, this is a video tutorial on cascading style sheet or CSS. So before moving on to CSS, let us take a look at a sample program. So this is a HTML program where I have used two different header tags h1 h2. The default color of these text is going to be black. So in order to change the color of these texts, I'm going to use a font tag. So as you can see, I have mentioned the color of H1 as red and the color of H2 as green. So the output of the program is going to be this. So let us come back to the program. So as you can see, To make all h1 as red, we need to specify the font for each h1. This makes the number of lines more. To overcome this, we go for cascading style sheet. What is CSS? CSS stands for cascading style sheets. So what is cascading? It refers to the procedures that determine which style will apply to a certain section if you have more than one style rule. What is style? How we want a certain part of your page to look. You can set things like color, margins, font, etc. for things like tables, paragraphs and headings. What are sheets? The sheets are like templates or a set of rules for determining how the web page will look. So CSS altogether is a styling language, a set of rules to tell browsers how your web page should look. So what is style? Style is a command that you set to tell the browser how a certain section of your web page should look. You can use style on many HTML elements like paragraph, header, table, etc. So how to write style rules? There are two parts. One is selector and another one is declaration. So what is selector? The HTML element you want to add style to. Example paragraph, header, table, etc. What is declaration? The statement of style for that element made up of property and value. So within the brace, curly braces, we give selector declaration. So declaration is going to be equal to property colon value. So what is property? What aspect you want to change? Example, color, font, margins, etc. What is value? The exact setting for that aspect. Example, red, italic, 40 pixels, etc. So essentially means the thing I want to change, the aspect of that thing I want to change colon, what I want it to be. H1 within the curly basis color colon red. So this means that speaking of my he heading one, I want the text color to be red. So let us consider an example where I want the color of the text in my paragraph to be yellow. So I give P within the curly braces color colon yellow. So this is the text in this paragraph where the color of the text is going to be yellow. Now let us consider another example where I give h1 and within the curly braces color colon blue semicolon background hyphen color colon green. It means that speaking of my heading one I want the text color to be blue and the background color to be green. So let us consider an example where I want the text color of my link to be red and the background color to be yellow. So what I'm going to give is A within the curly braces color colon red semicolon background hyphen color colon yellow. So this is going to be my output where this is my link is going to be in red color and the background of this text is going to be yellow. So where do I put my style rules? There are three types of style rules places that will we will cover inline, internal style sheet, external style sheet. So let us see an example for internal CSS. So as you can see in this sample HTML program, the CSS rule should be given within the style tag that is within the header portion of the HTML program. I have given two rules that is for H1 and H2. For H1, I have given color colon red 
semi colon font hyphen family colon algerian and for h2 i have given color colon green semi colon font hyphen family colon arial over here the each attributes that is the color colon red and the family sorry the font hyphen family it should be separated within a semi colon so in the body tag whenever i use h1 and h2 the values are going the values that is the font and the color of these text is going to be for h1 it is going to be red and the style is going to be algerian and for h2 it is going to be green and the font the and the style is going to be arial so the output of this program is going to be so this is going to be the output of the program so if you see the limitations of internal css this css is applicable to only this page but as you can see the advantages of this css the implementation of the css is within the source code of the same html page uh, the next type of css is external css in this type the css part is placed in a separate file and the extension should be file name dot css and the link is created from the html file to the css using a tag called link and this link should be placed in the head portion of the html program and the attributes are link rel is equal to style sheet and href equal to the path where the style sheet should be, uh, is placed here an example for external css i am going to use the same code as the internal css for this also i am going to copy the code of the internal css save this as external css dot html as you know in the external css the style that is the css portion should should be present in a separate file and in the head portion of the html file you need to specify the link to that particular css file so i am going to cut i'm going to cut the css portion from this file save it and i'm going to paste paste it in a new file and the extension of this file should be .css file name .css for the css to work in the html file you need to specify the link to that css file this link can be specified with the help of link tag and the attributes of this link tag are rel equals style sheet which is specified in the double quotations and href equals my css dot css when the css file is in the same folder as that of your html file you not you need not specify the path else you need to specify the complete path where the css file is present i have saved the file now when i open the external css dot html the rule is applied only to the h2 uh, h2 tag it is because the css can the css looks the first rule as a dummy rule and does not execute that rule so for the first rule to work before the first rule you need to add a dummy rule the name can be anything abc or dummy etc and within the braces you need not give anything save this file and when i again open the external css dot html the rules for all the tags have been applied the advantage of using external css is it can be applied to more than one pages when when you have n number of pages in your website you can apply for each page the, the same css file by linking it on the header part type of css is inline css in inline css the styles are represented in the line itself for example consider this html program if suppose i want to apply some styles to the tag p then my code will be modified as p style is equal to the required attributes let us consider an example for 
inline CSS. In inline CSS, you do not have any CSS part in the head, pa head portion of the HTML program. You need to specify the styles within the tag itself. So for example, for h1, h1 style equals within the double quotations color colon red semicolon font iphone family colon algerian similar to this you need to give the styles for each and every tag So let us save the program as in inline css.html. Inline css.html. Save. So the output is similar to that of the other CSS, but this is not commonly used because for each and every tag you need to specify the style. This is similar to the program without using CSS. Among the three CSS, this is the least commonly used type of CSS. This video would have helped you to learn how to write a program with CSS. Thank you for watching our video and if you have any doubts or suggestion, please put it in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe our channel.